Should we let go of Luke Skywalker? Should we just accept his fate in The Last Jedi and move on with new heroes? Before we start, I want you to think of a time that you had to do something very difficult, that you had to uh, face something, overcome something, a trial in your life. And while you were facing that time in your life, did you ever think of a fictional character and say, you know what, I'm going to be like them. I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to face this darkness and I'm going to be like this character. I want you to keep that in mind as you listen to this video. After the video, I'd like you to post it down below in the comments, because I'm sure everybody would be interested in hearing that. It's titled, Now I Get Why the Last Jedi Luke's Story Pissed Off So Many People. This is a Collider article by Julio Bardini. I think this article contains the fundamental difference between one side of the fandom and the other, and how they think. And it really gets to the heart of the divide in the fandom about The Last Jedi. If you're a fan of The Last Jedi, then you'll agree with this article. If you're not a fan, then you'll agree with me, and I'll tell you why. So the article starts out, Everyone remembers when Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi came out and the deep schism it caused in the Star Wars fandom, especially because of its portrayal of Luke Skywalker. Some fans marveled at how Ryan Johnson nailed his portrayal of the legendary Jedi while others still hold a grudge against him for supposedly ruining their childhood hero. Yet almost no one remembers an essential aspect of his. He was never that complex of a character to begin with, and what we like about him comes from what we project on him. So Julio's thesis here is Luke Skywalker wasn't even really a character. He was just an archetype, and uh, what we like about him, you know, that, that just comes from what the fans think that Luke should have been. He goes more into depth than this, and I'll argue his points later on. We all know how George Lucas structured the original Star Wars around Joseph Campbell's idea of the monomyth. An initially reluctant hero leaves the ordinary world, conquers challenges, and returns transformed. This is the template for most of our favorite stories, a framework that prioritizes the protagonist's journey and its challenges rather than complex development arcs. Uh, it's called the hero's journey. I'm not sure why... Why they can't say the word hero, <laughs> the protagonist, it's it's the hero's journey. And it comes from Joseph Campbell's book, Hero with a Thousand Faces, I think it is. In the original trilogy, Luke Skywalker has an incredible journey, though he is reluctant to go through most of his challenges from start to finish. He never had an actual personality, and is always finding reasons not to do things. Actually, yes, he did have a personality, I mean... <laughs> At any point in his arc, you know who Luke Skywalker is. You know the challenges that he had overcome. You know what drove him. You know everything about Luke Skywalker. I mean, it's he was a fleshed out character. He's the hero archetype. And yes, he did have a personality. He was a whiny kid at the beginning. You know, everybody knows. I want to go to the Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. He gradually matures throughout the trilogy. And is always finding reasons not to do things. That's... That comes from the hero's journey. A reluctant hero, you know, they don't want to do this, but they're driven to because of a higher purpose. Not to go to Alderaan, not to lift his X-Wing from the bog, not to face his father in a duel. It's kind of annoying, really. No, that's the point of the hero's journey. The hero, you know, if it was easy, the hero would just do it. And these things that were asked of Luke Skywalker in the movies were not easy. The article continues, that's because he was never meant to be a proper character, but rather a vessel for audience members to see themselves in. So here's the big point of contention in this article that I have a problem with. Luke Skywalker was never a character, but rather a vessel for audience members to see themselves in. That is 100% false. That's not how the hero archetype works. I feel like Han Solo right now is saying, like, Seriously, finishing out this paragraph, mythological archetypes are defined by the challenges they must overcome, not the reasons they have for doing so. Because in essence, quote, they are made to reflect the most difficult transitions we go through in life, as Ryan Johnson wisely said. So what is a hero? I'm going to ask you this. What is a hero? So a mythological archetype is basically the human experience. Again, Joseph Campbell's book, Hero with a Thousand Faces, where he went through all of mythology at that time and he noticed these trends with the hero and the hero would always go through the same journey it's a collective of human experiences but the point of stories the point of old myths 
were also to teach a lesson. It was always to teach lessons. It was to show us who we could be, not who we are right now. And that's the point that I'm disagreeing with this article with. Stories and characters within those stories are supposed to teach us lessons, right? They're supposed to show us, they're supposed to show us that we can overcome things, that we can overcome obstacles in our way, even though we don't want to do them. And the hero archetype is no different. They're all selfless characters and they show us that we can be more than we thought we were. That's the point. It's not for the audience member to say, okay, I'm projecting myself on. That's why these people feel so strongly about representation because they think like this. They think, okay, these characters have to be relatable, right? So relatable means that it's them on the screen. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. Real stories, real characters, fully fleshed out characters like Luke Skywalker are going to be that beacon of hope for people to get through hard things. And Luke Skywalker was definitely that for me. Personally, whenever I had to do some hard things in life, I thought about Luke Skywalker, okay? I, I'm sure I'm sure every Star Wars fan has. Well, I'll just give you an example. My deployment to Iraq. I served in the army and I was deployed to Iraq. And it was a hard thing to do, especially when you're a kid and you're just joining up for the first time. You're, you're a little nervous about going over there, right? But then you say, you know, what would Luke do? In, in this situation, he would he would answer the call. That helped me personally. Let's continue on with this article. A Star Wars children's book makes it even clearer. One thing that Lucasfilm has been nailing about its management of Star Wars is publishing efforts. There are countless books and comics expanding the galaxy and providing fresh takes even on the classic movies and providing fresh takes even on the classic movies. One of those is Adam Gidwitz. The Empire Strikes Back, so you want to be a Jedi. It retells the classic Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, from Luke's own perspective, and Gidwitz provides a rich character analysis in the author's notes. Instead of the mythological approach, Gidwitz uses fairy tales as the basis of his argument, and if we're honest, they aren't that different. He explains, for example, that we don't know much about who Cinderella is as a character, only that her sisters are envious of her beauty and force her to work for them. If we knew anything more complex about her, it would ruin the story. According to Gitwitz, because the point of Cinderella is that we can put ourselves in her shoes. Well, I would say that that's false too. I mean, it's a two-hour movie, right? You tell as much about the character as you can. Cinderella had a whole backstory of how she came to be in that situation with her mother and her sisters and where she started in life and it influenced what she did later on in the story it wasn't a vessel for people to just say um i'm gonna put all my flaws on that character i want her to be me no it it shows her you know going out there putting the dress on and going to the ball like she wanted to do even though she was terrified of her mother and her sisters she still went what complexities are these people talking about i think the complexities that they're actually referring to are uh, their own failures and weaknesses in life. But all of these characters have weaknesses within themselves that they have to overcome. The same thing happens to Luke Skywalker. He isn't morally gray like Han Solo or idealistic like Leia Organa. Instead, he simply goes through the adventure until he emerges transformed. What do you mean he simply goes through the adventure? <laughs> he was... He didn't just simply go through the adventure. He he had to make hard choices. He had to overcome his own fear and doubt. He had to confront his father, Darth Vader, which would be the hardest thing to do for that character. Again, the events in his past, his training with Obi-Wan, with Yoda, his aunt and uncle dying, all influenced what he did. Picked up friends along the way. That's what made him want to leave Dagobah, leave his training early to go off and rescue them and it's what pushed the story forward it wasn't anything that the audience did the audience is just watching this and saying okay yes i could be brave too like luke skywalker they're assuming that the story is pushing the character no that's a character driven story the choices that luke made drove the story gidwitz then argues that luke and cinderella are avatars for the reader or viewer he is absolutely right no no he's not 
These are universal stories that everyone can relate to. Yes, they're relatable because we relate to the characters and their struggles, not because we are the characters. And these characters are empty so that we can inhabit them, so we can do their deeds, live their lives, and learn their lessons. So of course you may think that The Last Jedi's Luke isn't your Luke because you have always projected yourself onto him. You are your Luke. That's not true. We disliked what happened with Luke in The Last Jedi because that's not something that Luke Skywalker the character would have done he would have gone and hid he was always selfless he was always heroic he always made the deci the hardest decision which is not hiding on a freaking island with porgs right and drinking breast milk from an alien everybody that saw that movie that understands Luke Skywalker as a character knew that that's not what Luke would have done here's his final point the last Jedi turns Luke Skywalker into a proper character so a proper character is a proper character a coward then is it is it someone that just failed miserably at the end the thing about the last jedi is that it's not about luke skywalker there's a new generation of heroes who become our vessels and luke not a proper character with previous successes and failures guides them on their journeys what are you t he had previous successes and failures what do you call blowing up the death star what do you call losing his hand what do you call any of the things that luke went through i mean he he lost his first fight against vader he got a medal at the end of a new hope because of his success the only true character trait he has in the original trilogy is his reluctance as most characters who follow campbell's hero's journey do that's just not true at all he had a lot of character traits okay heroes teach us a lot of things i'm gonna tell you a couple things that heroes do teach us okay what do heroes teach us google what do heroes teach us values heroes can inspire us to be heroic by exactly Amplifying values we admire, empathy, courage, compassion, which Luke showed all of those, how to overcome challenges, hope, meaning and purpose, social connection, emotional intelligence, how to face fears, Luke showed all all of those things this article is just going off of a book that some random guy wrote okay about star wars and about mythological archetypes factually just incorrect anybody that's taken like a basic high school level mythology class well i guess it wouldn't be high school it'd probably be college a basic college level you know starter credits oh what do i take i guess i'll learn about mythology knows this about the hero's journey about the archetypes this is what myths were used for also not just a conglomerate of the human experience but also what we can learn from heroes how we can be better and it's still there in the last jedi and just like in the original trilogy he has to overcome his weariness to save the galaxy which he does by the end of the movie what frustrates people is that luke doesn't simply save the galaxy as a fairy tale hero usually does because that's what we would do in his shoes that's not true at all most people People would hide on an island and drink breast milk from an alien instead of facing their fears but we are not and he isn't the hero anymore as that rule falls to Rey and the resistance and yet the last Jedi is so relevant to the character that it does have him save the galaxy to protect the heroes but it first gives him a proper development arc something that doesn't happen in the original trilogy are you kidding me right now <laughs> are you kidding me with this apparently Luke Skywalker didn't have a character arc in the original trilogy he was the same guy at the beginning as he was at the end was he a whiny farm boy in return of the jedi was he was he a mature heroic jedi in a new hope no why is that because there was a character arc and they just disregarded that entire arc in the last jedi it's like it never happened it's fair that people were frustrated with luke in the last jedi but nowadays most stories focus on character development but the original trilogy couldn't be like that and now luke isn't the hero we need anymore otherwise what's the point of new star wars movies exactly what is <laughs> what is the point of these movies anyway <laughs> star wars episode 8 the last jedi is available to stream on disney plus okay there's the article I hope I did a good job of explaining this. I know a little thing about mythology. I know a little something about the hero's journey. I'm also an indie comic creator. I'm working on a book right now called Blue Phoenix Bad Ashes. It is going to be a real hero. Okay, the Blue Phoenix is a hero it's not an ad it's just this is what i'm into i'm a storyteller i think about this stuff all day long i think about my stories all day long what would my character do in this situation what if he did this it's always going to be that hero archetype he's going to be reluctant but then he's going to go do it because that's what we pass on to the next generation that's 
the crux of it. That's the most important part of these myths and stories. That's why everybody's so angry about Star Wars, because we pass this on to our kids. And if every character is just a hollow archetype for you to put all of your anxieties, all your fears, all your imperfections in, then we will have no heroes at all. And yes, I think we need to save Luke Skywalker. I don't think that we should let Luke Skywalker die. Put your story down below. I'm really interested in hearing what you have to say. Again, I want to hear about a time in your life when a fictional hero of yours inspired you to do something great or to overcome some obstacle because I think we all have one. We all grew up in a time where heroes existed. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.